Mobile Moyo, an 18-year-old son of Mishik Moyo from village 2B, Stanhope North, in Yaman Lovo, committed one of the worst crimes against his cousin. This happened on the 19th of January 2020 at approximately 8 p.m. at night. Mobile, with his little sister Smusisiwe Moyo, his cousin Rumbiza Mkwananzi, a 13-year-old, and her younger brother Mtulis Mkwananzi, a 10-year-old, went to bed. Their grandmother, who was also their guardian, was not around, so they slept in the same hut for protection. The two boys, Mobile and Mtulisi, slept on the bed, while the two girls, Rumbizai and Smusisiwe, slept on the floor. It is believed that he had been sexually interested in his 13-year-old cousin Rungitai, and he saw their sleeping arrangement as an opportunity for his perversions. He then woke up at around 3 a.m. and went to his 13-year-old cousin Rungi asleep on the floor. She was woken up to him fonding and touching her, and he tried to force himself on her. However, she resisted him and he realized that he would be in trouble if she made a noise. He then decided to end her life there and there in the dead of the night. While the other cousins slept, he strangled her to death with his bare hands. And when he saw that she had died, he dragged her body outside to the shrub fence of the garden. He went back home to collect a plastic tent, matches, paraffin and a shovel and returned to where he had left the body, wrapped it in a tent, and carried it on his shoulders. He then went to the bush, dug a pit, and put the body inside. He poured paraffin on it and lit a matches to try and burn it. When her younger brother woke up the next morning, he could not find his sister and he was worried. He tried looking for her everywhere, but he could not find her. He then realized that she was nowhere near the homestead and he made a decision to go to their uncle in the next village. His name was Petros Ngomo. When he came, he inspected the bedroom where she had slept on the floor and discovered that there had been signs of struggle in the bedroom. And when he went outside, he saw that there were signs of something big that had been dragged from the bedroom hut. He then decided to follow shoe prints that he saw from the hut going into the forest. And when the shoe prints disappeared, he saw a mound of soil that indicated that there was a shallow grave a kilometer from the homestead. He then made a report to the police and they came and exhumed the body. The shoe prints matched those of Ngobile and he admitted to forcing himself on Ruby killing her and burying her body. She was taken to the hospital for post-mortem and he was arrested and charged with murder. He claimed that he had tried and failed to rape his cousin and killed her because he was afraid that she would report him. He pled guilty to culpable homicide claiming that he had no intention to kill her and that his spirit had influenced him. The judge, however, convicted him of one count of murder and acquitted him of one count of rape. He said that the deceased was a young life that had been unnecessarily lost and the court had a duty to protect the sanctity of human life. He also said that society requires protection from dangerous criminals and it looks up to the courts to do justice and not condone crime in any manner. He was found to be mentally sane to stand trial so he could not blame a mental disorder for his crime and there was no sufficient evidence to justify his actions. With all this in mind, the judge sentenced him to 18 years imprisonment.